Well, hello again and welcome back to my YouTube channel as we continue discovering yet more vintage and interesting off-road motocross machines here in my world of classic dirt bikes. Now, in this continuing series of checking out the world's best and sometimes unusual classics, we have in this particular clip unearthed another obscure British-made machine as we take a look at Terry Pickering's 1980 Wilco Moto 500. Now this very rare machine is another hidden classic from the Terry Pickering collection and was designed, manufactured and built right here in the UK. Now until I actually became in contact with this machine for the first time I never knew anything about the Wilco Moto Mark or any history about the machine itself. Although with a little research and information from the people who were involved in the manufacture and racing of these bikes, the Wilcomoto Motorcycle Company story became a lot clearer. The Wilcomoto Motorcycle Company apparently was established in the early 1980s by Tom Wilcox and his three sons, Steve, Mike and Brian. Now, from their hometown of Hereford in the southwest of Britain, the Wilcox family were always heavily involved in the motocross scene, and not only were they accomplished riders, they were all very intuitive mechanical engineers and had already put together many different types of prototype motors. Now, they also upgraded many of the internals of other manufacturers' engines in order to improve their strength and reliability. Now, as the Wilcox family were already manufacturing, improving and sometimes even surpassing the engineering tolerances of other manufacturers, the logical step, of course, was for them to build their very own motocross machine. Now our featured bike is the result of the family's handiwork on this very first bike venture and every part including the frame, engine, front and rear suspension and swing arm were all manufactured by the Wilcox family in-house. To make this brand new 500cc two-stroke motor, they outsourced the magnesium casting of the crankcases to a specialist and then the Wilcox uh, company did all the final machining and other engineering finishing in-house. Now of course all the other internals of the motor were also designed and manufactured by the Wilcox company for this brand new prototype motorcycle engine. Now, in the past, people have commented on how this 500cc Wilcomoto engine was just a copy of the legendary YZ Yamaha motor, but of course this is an entirely untrue fact as the kickstart and primary drive sprocket are on opposite sides of the uh, original Japanese machine. Now, the motor is a 498cc a uh, two-stroke engine with a four-speed gearbox and reed valve induction intake. Now, these holes in the barrel are said to have been included in the castings because it was intended that the Wilcox engineers would at one time introduce a type of power valve system into this new 500 motor. Now, of course, with this engine being a 500 two-stroke, it is very thirsty for fuel and uh, it has fed its fuel through this rather large AML carburetor onto this uh, reed valve induction intake. Now the engine also has a wet multi-plate clutch and four-speed gearbox. Now this machine of course has not been fitted with a decompressor so uh, it uh, may take a bit of firing up when you come to kick it over. Now these front forks of course were manufactured by 
the Wilcox uh, Company, and these 42mm stanchions and magnesium lower legs were reputed to give the rider about 13 inches of travel. Now, uh, also on the front end of this bike, a very unique system on the front brake hub and disc. Now, the front disc on this bike has been cast as one item along with the hub, so no need whatsoever to bolt the disc onto the hub as the, both these parts were cast as a single item. Now, of course, this front brake caliper is yet again another one of the designed and manufactured uh, Wilco parts for this machine. And it just seems that there is just nothing the Wilcox boys could not design or build for this brand new bike. Oh yes, and I forgot to mention, this was also manufactured in magnesium. Now, other Wilcox manufactured parts on this bike continued with their very own swing arm here, which is manufactured using a much thicker grade of steel than would normally be used on other similar motocross machines. Now, these Wilcox manufactured swing arms were made much stronger than similar machines that would be on the track back in the 1980s. Now this rear suspension system could never be construed as a copy of any other manufacturer's system as this was another innovative designed and built suspension system by the talented Wilcox bike builders. Now this heavy duty monoshock with its remote gas filled reservoir is reputed to have given the rider at least 13 inches of rear travel. Now in our particular case the rear end of our subject bike appears to sag somewhat in the rear shock department. Although this is due to the rear shock remote reservoir in need of regassing and in reality the clearance here should be several inches greater than you actually see. Now, of course, the Wilcox Manufacturing Company also made a brand new exhaust system for their new project bike. And when you consider some of the uh, other more demanding engineering challenges they had while building this bike, this uh, exhaust system was uh, really just a small walk in the park. Now the airbox of course was another innovative design by the Wilcox uh, company with the rubber uh, elbow and uh, feeding air into that big ammo carburetor and on to the reed valve. Of course not every single item was made by the Wilcox company for this brand new bike. Other ancillary smaller parts, including the links of the handlebars, the gasser, levers, cables, tyres, chain and wheel rims were all sourced because it was more convenient for the company to do this rather than painstakingly making these smaller items themselves. Now, of course, we had more magnesium construction on this bike in the shape of the bottom and top triple clamps, which were also manufactured using high-grade magnesium. Now, this is yet another piece of Wilcox engineering that was made specifically for this machine. And this exquisite purpose-built hydraulic master cylinder for the front brake is further evidence of the Wilcox family's manufacturing prowess and engineering skills. Now the parts that I am unsure of 
uh, on these bikes are the plastics including this lovely plastic fuel tank now whether these items were purchased uh, outside of the Wilcox manufacturing I'm unsure but uh, the fuel tanks and plastics fit this bike very well indeed and naturally of course these side plastics would be specifically uh, molded for this particular bike but as to who actually molded them I'm unsure now this bike was also fitted with this lovely plush uh, seat which uh, any motocross rider would be glad to swing his leg over now to get some background on just exactly what this beast was like to ride on the track I just happened to track down one of the riders who did some development on this uh, particular machine back in the day now that particular rider was uh, ex-GP Kawasaki watch rider Lawrence Spence. Now Lawrence of course was a top class rider for the Kawasaki team back in the early 80s and will always be remembered for his gruelling battle with Britain's Graham Noyce at the 1983 Farley Castle event when his 500 Kawasaki's gearbox seized and he had to drag the bike more than 50 yards with the back wheel locked up. To cross the checkered flag. Now when I asked Lawrence about this particular machine he uh, told me that this bike as a package had huge potential to be a top motocross machine although the bike needed a lot more development before it could take on the best that the Japanese had to offer. Now the motor he said had loads of power but there was just not much at the bottom end or mid-range. He said the engine gave you absolutely everything at the top end and then it tried to just rip your arms off. Now one of the other comments Lawrence made about this machine was that the front brake was uh, certainly not the best. Now he told me that the disc was originally chrome plated and he thought that that really didn't help the stopping power of the bike. But nevertheless, one of the good points that Lawrence pointed out about this particular bike was its overall weight. I think the weight was just around 103 kilograms at the time and he told me that it was quite a good bike to throw around although the caster angle for the front end also needed changing to help it turn into the corners better. Now the rear shock was another point that uh, needed attention according to uh, Lawrence as he said it tended to struggle to cope with very bumpy tracks. Now Lawrence also told me that he was not for a minute suggesting that this was a bad bike. No, far from it he told me, but when you consider how quick the bike was manufactured from drawing board to finished machine. It just needed more time to develop and get things sorted before it went in to full production. Now as far as I know there were only about 30 of these bikes ever produced and there cannot be many examples of these unique machines still in existence. So it's thanks to Terry that he has rescued at least one example of the Wilcox family's superb legacy. Now, of course, the most amazing thing about this entire Wilcomoto motocross machine is that almost all of the bike is British designed and British made. Yet I personally had never ever seen or heard of these Wilcomoto bikes in all my years of being involved in motocross until, of course, this instance. But this of course is just another of the rare machines from the Terry Pickering collection and Terry tells me that he is currently working on another rare British classic, a lovely cotton EMX which we hope to feature here on my YouTube channel sometime in the future. So thanks once again for your valuable time and I do hope you enjoyed looking at this unique and timeless British classic. Now if you like what you see, please take the time to subscribe to my YouTube channel. 
So until I unearth more mechanical rarities from around the world, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon. This video was brought to you in association with Love Sport Motocross Race and Leisure Wear and also in association with VMX Magazine, the world's undisputed number one publication for all your vintage and classic dirt bike motorcycles.